So here we are in Adamstown, Pennsylvania, checking out this village. Stoutburg Village. Stoutburg Village, which is like being in another country. Walking around there was like really different and not like anything I've been to around here. It's like, it's got like a, I don't know, like Eastern European kind of vibe. It was a really cool place. And we came here to visit the Toy Robot Museum, which is uh, pretty amazing. This <laughs> is like being somewhere else, dude. It's so cool, <laughs> Pronounce that word on the wall. That? Uh, Wilkeman? Or Vilkeman? Yeah, it was really, it was kind of strange because we were the only people there on this day. It was a super hot day, and walking around it was literally like some kind of like back to the future type thing. We like jumped out of a time machine or something. Yeah, but somehow it was like, got like a back rooms feel too, because there was literally no one around. Yeah. It kind of felt a little bit like being on a movie set too. Yeah. And then it was here that we found the Toy Robot Museum, and we were about to be floored. Found me. Yeah. <laughs> we found you. It's a neat little shop. Wow, cool. Yeah, when you first walk in, it's absolutely amazing. It's like this great gift shop of all kinds of cool space toys and trinkets and books and novelties. It, it's pretty amazing. And we spent a lot of time here. We spent a lot of money too. But <laughs> we bought a bunch of stuff because it was like, wow. It's look a at great all these, shop. All these neat things that you just you just don't see, you know. All space, all just really cool outer space planetary stuff. Uh, we, we loved it. And that's, that's just walking in the door. Yeah, but you know? this stuff is for sale, obviously. The stuff yeah, in the back is yeah, not. <laughs> the gift shop stuff is for sale. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so much, so much great stuff. And, of course, my dad was here. My dad made an appearance in the robot museum. All right, so I'm here with Joe in Adamstown at one of the most amazing museums I've ever seen in my life. I had no idea what to expect when I walked in and was completely blown away by the sheer amount of robots in here. So I want to take a minute to talk to you a little bit and find out what got you into collecting robots. I'm a retired New York City police officer, and for the last 10 of my 20 years with the department, I was on the SWAT team. And I worked with these machines. Now, most people recognize them as bomb disposal machines, and that's what they are. We didn't use ours for bombs. Our bomb techs had their own. We modified the ones we had for tactical work hostage situations, barricaded perpetrators, emotionally disturbed people, anybody threatening to shoot the first cop that comes to the door, well, it ain't going to be me. It's going to be the bucket of bolts, and we'd be operating it from a control console up to 330 feet away. And about 35, maybe 40 years ago now, my wife and I were here, up here antiquing. We used to come here as weekend getaways out of Manhattan. And we were in a toy store looking for something for my cousin's birthday, and Margo spotted a little plastic robot in the toy shop. It's one of them back there in the museum. And she said, oh, honey, isn't this cute? You work with robots. Here's a toy robot. I'll buy it for you. Isn't that cute? And then she bought me a second one. And then she bought me a third one. And had she known my obsessive, compulsive personality better than as she found out later on, she never would have bought me that first one. Because it just got way out of control. There are three, more than 3,000 robots back there to look yeah, at and some to play with. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Wow. Here's the original commercial for the Rock'em Sock'em Rock Robot. Is right back on again. It's just part of the action with the world's only boxing robots, the Rock'em Sock'em Robots by Marx. Takes two managers to handle the fighters and lots of skill to win. With these control levers, you can keep your fighters in motion to duck punches. When you press this puncher, he throws a right uppercut. Press the other puncher and there's a left jam. Lots of exciting action and fun for everyone when the world's only boxing robots battle it out. The blue bar is looking for an opening. And so many variants of the Rock'em Sock'em robots. That was Optimus and Megatron and all the different versions. I mean, who knew they made so many versions of those? Yeah, that's the cool thing about this museum is not only are the robots represented, but a lot of the different variants of them as well. Yeah, and it's cool because you'll see, like, you know, he'll have, like, like see Mr. Machine there. I mean, I, of course we know of Mr. Machine, but did you know there was that many different variants and 
different versions. I mean, I had no idea. I thought there was only one, and it's like there's five or six, <laughs> and uh, which which was cool to learn about the history of them. And and like you'll see coming up with all the screens that show the commercials, you can learn history, and there's all little notes and notations. It's pretty cool. Now, for me, this this right here was like, the, the first thing I ever collected in my life was robots. And after Monsters, robots are absolutely my number two. If I ever were to, you know, be able to afford collecting something <laughs> else, it would definitely be robots. I mean, when, like I said, it was the first thing I ever collected as a little kid. My mom would take me to Child World and let me pick out all these cool little Tommy robots. And I had an army of them. And that's what I loved was like how he set up this display is exactly how I used to set up my robots when I was a little kid. Granted, I had a little tiny ones and he's got <laughs> incredible ones, but it, it, that the thing with being able to set them up like this is like I had that Tweaky. Yeah. And I love Tweaky. I met Tweaky when I was a little kid mm -hmm. in the suit. And then as an adult, I met Felix Silla, and he was a super nice guy. And I, I love, 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 love Tweaky. Mm. But uh, the way he set these up is exactly how you would set it up as a kid. That's what I loved about it. It was, it, it's not like most museums where everything is like set up a certain way. Like this was set up like if you were like a spoiled rich kid and you had tons of <laughs> yeah. great stuff, you would set it up like this with all the you know, th their eyes looking at you a certain way and yeah. all their little heads were turned a certain way. Like it, it was a lot of time and effort was put into this and you can tell. And I, I was really enjoying being here out of all the museums I've ever been to by far. This is my favorite one. And uh, I actually can't wait to go back because I loved it. Yeah. I want to go back again is I, f I feel like I could go here 10 times and not See everything. I just want to sit on the floor here and just <laughs> just eat ring dings and stare at everything, you know? It's just, like, so cool. They just set you up with, like, a you know? He-Man TV tray and oh, you're all set. this was the best. I just want to <laughs> hang out here, like, every day. You know, I, I loved looking at them. I loved their faces. I loved seeing them on display. I loved learning about them. If you look, there's all little cards in front of all of them that tell yeah. you where they're from, what year they were made. I love that. And there's so many cool robots in here. So many different things that I hadn't seen before, and variants, and and uh, it was just it was really enjoyable. It was just really cool, really cool to see um, all the different all the different types of robots. And I knew there was thousands of them, but once you actually stand in front of this many robots, it's really impressive. Yeah, it's really I really love how he set it all up too, because you can see everything everything's displayed so perfectly it's like a little robot arm army on every shelf yeah he definitely army built a, a lot of cool robots i love that one <laughs> i know they're so cute like i want to wanted to take them all home what's your favorite sci-fi show is there something that just really sticks with you is well i'm i'm playing uh, forbidden planet up here on the big screen tv and it's a, it's a classic at this point, originally released in 1956, starring Leslie Nielsen, long before his hair turned white and he started doing comedy, <laughs> Walter Pidgeon and Anne Francis. And it's a sci-fi film all the way through, uh, great special effects for its time, and it was kind of like Star Trek for the 1950s. And uh, Gene Roddenberry may have been a, a genius for creating that whole Star Trek universe, but he plagiarized the bejeebies out of this film, in my opinion. Uh, if you watch it, you'll see the, the Star Trek uh, references and, and uh, scenes. <laughs> now, I loved seeing Robbie the Robot. All the different versions of, uh, of Robbie was just awesome. I love Forbidden Planet. I love the old sci-fi stuff. Um, like I said, after Monsters, Robots, and Sci-Fi, and Outer Space is by a very close second with classic monsters. Anything from this time period, uh, for me, the 50s and 60s, is just was the coolest, the pinnacle of human history. <laughs> yeah, it really was. I mean... Not, not RoboCop. <laughs> not Robo, not you, RoboCop. <laughs> But I mean, like, even when I was a kid, like, this is awesome. Oh, that's I love so that so much. That is so impressive. And the, both of these just the, display The bigger they are, the cooler they are. It's just like big robots is just so cool. Yeah. And there were so many different versions of, of the Lost in Space robot that just was like, wow. 
Now, I have a few of them in my own collection. I do have uh, some classic Lost in Space robots. Yeah. So, the the B9. B9 robot. A lot of cool ones in here that I hadn't seen. You know, like ones in cars and all this stuff. And it was like, just just to be able to see this many in one place. Yeah, and I it's mean, a mixture of old and new. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's cool, too. And it's like learning things. I'm like, I love that. <laughs> the little so robot cute. taxi I thought was so cool. Um, and then, you know, I kind of made little mental notes as to like, all right, I want that one. I got to try that this. one down. I want this. I want that. I'm going to need <laughs> that one. These were some early ones right there. Mr. Robot. That what is a awesome. great piece. That's a great piece. We should have filmed that one longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great piece. We'll have to go back and do a round two. We'll do another one. Yeah, the follow-up video. So if you guys see stuff you like and you'd like to, to concentrate on more, comment <laughs> below because we are definitely, definitely going back. I have him, the little robot fan up there. He's so cute. Look at his little arm up there. He's like, yes. He's keeping everything cool. He's keeping it cool because he's a robot yeah, fan. <laughs> I, I got him. I love him so much. Inspector Gadget. And the little McDonald's changeables. I love those. Again, that's another thing. When we were little kids, those guys too, the little wind-up pulley things. Uh, yeah. I had those too when I was little. That Burger King robot Happy Meal box, kids meal box. Just <laughs> really cool stuff. And just just seeing it all. I mean, I, I was smiling the whole time in this place. Just like, wow. Your favorite robot is... Uh, Robert, Robert the Robot, made by the Ideal Toy Company back in 1954, 55 and 56. Uh, it was a very popular toy, so they kept producing it, and it was even reproduced by another manufacturer in uh, 2004. What is it about that one that just stands out to you? It's just is that the well, quintessential it, robot, or yeah, it was the first American-made talking toy. There's a little plastic record inside it and a crank handle on the back, and when you turn the crank, the record would turn, it would play, and it would talk. And for 1954, man, that was state of the art. You know, yeah. you couldn't get any better than that. So it had that nice feature to it. It's been around for, for a number of years uh, in production and been re-released. So there's a little bit of a pedigree to it and something to talk about rather than a, a one-off that, that doesn't really have much of a history. This is Robert by the Idea Toy Company. Because they were in direct competition with Lewis Marks and he always sold his toys for a couple of dollars less, the next year they made Robert, they cheapened the toy they eliminated the tools that were stored behind this little belly button tool cover, but they kept the price the same. The next year they, they were manufacturing it, they cheapened it even more. They eliminated the internal linkage that connects the arms to the wheels, and the arms used to move back and forth when it be rolled it forward or backwards. And they redesigned the head. They eliminated the clear oh. plastic antenna and the clear plastic eyes. So they used less material and they incorporated it into a simpler assembly. I think it went out of business about uh, 30, 35 years ago. But in 2004, the gentleman bought the rights to the name, found the original molds for the toy, and reproduced Robert in that configuration there. They also produced the two different versions of the Robert on a bulldozer. And if you play this one, this is, a, uh, this is part of a promotional film that they did for one of the toy fairs to show to the salesman to try to promote additional orders for Robert. Look a great big bulldozer like this one. I'm going to buy one of those. I need a Robert the Robot. Yes. I need one. <laughs> Both of them. I need one of him and I need the little, the one on the, uh, on the little tractor. I got to yes, get those that's two. so cute. I need both of them. Coming soon to the collection. <laughs> These were cool. I remember all the different. Like, I definitely Alfie. had like the one in the back with the orange face. I, I had that white Alfie that's like in the back with the orange face. Yeah. Topo was for the rich kids. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you had to have a Mac. Yeah, you had to, <laughs> you had to be Mac, and if you had one of those, because that was yeah, that was some next level. I I did not know anyone that had that robot. I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I was like, what is this? <laughs> And, of course, we all know C-3PO. There was always that one rich kid, though. Yeah. You know? Not in my neighborhood, but, in all, like, in movies. <laughs> Nobody in was movies, rich in my neighborhood. Yeah, in the movies that we would watch in our neighborhood, there was always a kid in that neighborhood. Yeah, and he had that, too, the Max. Yeah. The giant Max. 
You know, I didn't know anybody who had one of that. Again, that's a rich kid toy right there. Yeah, well, yeah, we didn't have that stuff. I had a couple of them little ones, those little Robo Force ones. Ah. You know, and my cousin had that um, telephone in his room, that Robo Force really? telephone. Yeah. I used to think that was so cool, and I used to be like, "Oh, you gotta let me get that robot," and he'd be like, "You're never getting that robot." <laughs> <laughs> and then all these little clocks, like Astro Boy. 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 Of now. <laughs> I can't talk, <laughs> but I love Astro Boy. He's so cute. Yeah, so many different ones. I mean, I was looking at these for a while, just like really, really taking it all. Even now looking at them, I'm just like, it was taking it all in. It was just like so Im impressive and just so cool. I know. I just, like, I want that now. I didn't know that existed. It's a pink robot lunchbox. Yeah, you need that. I'm going to take my stuff to work in it. <laughs> I had those, though. The little Radio Shack ones? Yes, my grandpa loved Radio Shack, and he got me a Roby. Is it Roby? Or is it I, Robbie? I never actually heard it pronounced, but I love that. It's whatever you want it to be. A little outer space bank. Oh yeah, my that God. one in the middle is great. Yes, the little alien. Yeah. That's on the list now, that too. That one is great. Yeah, but I had Roby. I called him Roby, so I got to get him again. These aren't apparently very rare, right? Um, I said, now, see, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's, you know, I, I, I'm more familiar with the mainstream toy robots, the Marks stuff and obviously anything that's tv movie related but this this collection was like next level there was a lot of like <laughs> deep cuts yeah. you know a lot, a lot deep of tracks. yeah deep track robots <laughs> where you're just like wow you know like who is this one and who and and i could have literally spent all day just learning about them i'm fascinated yeah. by like by we show you guys a lot in this episode but i can't urge you enough to go there and check this out in person because yeah, this it is, is worth the drive from anywhere. It really wherever is. you are, this is worth the drive to go and just see these. Plus, there's like a million antique shops nearby. Now, of course, so. Tetsujin. You know, I, yes. I know him, and I know Gort, and I know you know the Mister Atomic Craxton robot. I mean, you know that the, the mainstream stuff because I've learned about it throughout the years, all the different you know stuff. But there's a lot of obscure ones, a lot of like you know Japanese ones, and that I was just unfamiliar with. Um, but I loved all of them. So much neat little, little things. I mean, I think that was a that was a Shogun Warriors oh, yeah. um, made toy. Well, toy that was released under that product line. I know there's so many cute little trinkets that I now need. I didn't know existed. I had a lot of the the wind up ones. Some of those ones I see in the front. I had a couple of those. I had all the Tommy ones. I had all the, and uh, my mom still has these in a box. Some of these old ones. I'm going to have to get those. Re-add them to the collection. Yes. Those were cute. Those ones in the box. I love them. Those were great. The doggy ones. Yeah. Snackula, if she ever wanted to create, you know, collect some doggy robots. There's plenty that I didn't even know existed <laughs> <laughs> that are adorable. Yeah, it was great. So much different stuff. So many different things to see. And, you know, all the different commercials you could watch. And just learning about all the different robots. And it was extremely impressive i know i keep saying that but i can't stress it enough and around every turn was like more cool like stuff. the iron giant you know yeah i mean it it definitely ran through all the decades metropolis you know robot man i had a robot man actually when i was a kid and i loved him i also had a robot man when i was little. i think it was like that was definitely my first robot thing yeah he was he was great i want actually i'm gonna get a robot man again yeah i should get one i know i love him <laughs> well there was a female one as well yeah yeah all these different you know the ones that would serve you drinks and stuff like roby jr and so many different ones yeah like that's cool but this i love that robots and cotton candy yeah. like that's like two of your favorite things combined his name too i believe was robbie i mean there's, there's so many it's such an easy robot name yeah so. it's a given but he's a cotton candy maker i mean how yes. cool and the cotton candy stuff is, is still that? inside he's unused that is so so cool i wanted that thing i wanted to take that thing home yeah it was so cool if you could only take one thing home from there what would it have been it would have been that i love <laughs> that or the the mexican um the mexican b9 robot yeah i want one of those bad i'm, I'm gonna be getting one of them i'm on the i'm on the That's prowl for too. one <laughs> yeah i love that so if you have one for sale yeah. let us know i need one of those definitely so many different <laughs> like, even elmo so many different ones and there's so many like 
you know, and the, and the variety, like the fact that he would, you know, collect every color and, and all the different variants to these was just... I like the pink one. You know. And then the boxes. The yeah. whole top shelf was just loaded with, like, all the original boxes and all the the artwork, and it was just like, wow, like, I love seeing that. Yeah. I'm kind of an... I love that one on the left. Yes. That one was, was really cool. And it's just so much stuff you didn't realize existed. Voltron. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Black Hole. Vincent. Vincent. He's cute. There's the other Voltron in the back. I love all of these. I know. <laughs> like, I just, I... <laughs> I just want to work here, I think. I'm going to just stare at the robots all day. I know. And the, the cool thing about robots is, like, you know... They all have their own, like, little personality. Yeah. Like, when you look at them, it's like they've all got their own little personality to them. And that, that's that's a cool thing, why they look so great on a shelf on display. Because it's like they literally have their own little personality. Yeah, definitely. See all the different variants. All the different colors. And that was great. Yeah, to see the box. I mean, who has that? Who has the original Remco shipping box? It's one thing to have the box, but the shipping box was like... Yeah, you rarely see that, just period. Very rarely. Very rarely do you ever see original shipping boxes. And I love that stuff, because it's like, that's how it came. That's how it was back then, you know? And it's just great, like... I love how many pink robots there are. It's more than I realized. Now I, I got no a problem. Idea. I had no idea there was that <laughs> many pink robots. I now have a new addiction. And of course, Wally. He's so cute. Yeah, Wally. Even to this day, like robots. It's like I can watch anything, but I can't watch anything happen to animals or robots. And if, you can't watch Big Hero Six. Yeah, forget it. Oh, I can't even. I or can't the Transformers, watch maybe. No, well, that's that's a <laughs> given. That's a given. But uh, yeah, anything. Even Wally bums me out. Wally's sad. It's too super sad. Too. He sad. was mean. <laughs> I, can't. I don't like her that much. <laughs> She hurt all, <laughs> Wally's feelings, and I don't like her. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that's a, yeah, a weird have, thing we bonded over. I know. The personalities of these things. I you know, know. They're so cute. I know. It's like there's, like, little spirits, you know, trapped in each one of them. I know. It's like. I like that guy right there. My I toxic the trait is thinking that great. robots are, like, <laughs> have sentient feelings. <laughs> and I love them so much. They're so cute. I know. And like all the different little the little banks and all the so many cool ones. Like look at that blue one. It yeah. looks like a little bat robot. With yeah. These little ears. That's so cute. Yeah, there was so many great great robots in here. I know. And this went on. This went on and on. Yeah. Like, you know, you you're going through and it's just like every time you take a turn, there's like a whole case of just you know More. amazing robots and yeah. And that one like a Furby, on the left. That's. It looked like a deconstructed Furby. I don't know. This, this, this is one of those things where it's like you you come here, you check them out, and when you come back, you're going to see all different stuff. Yeah. And I like that. That's another thing, too. Like, this is definitely the kind of museum you can go to over and over again. And we will. And, see, and we will. Mm -hmm. And see completely different stuff. Like, oh, I didn't see that last time. Or, you know, I had that. That's what I'm pointing at right there. I had that robot watch. I like the robot that was, man one. It was one of the coolest things I had when I was a little kid. Those are cute. A robot watch. And look at the little, this is so cute, how they have, like, the little Christmas village buildings, that there's a robot factory one. Definitely want that. Yeah. I wasn't familiar with a lot of these, too. I yeah. Like, I liked learning about them. And, you know, Joe has so much knowledge. He knows every piece and every robot in here. And, like, when you when you have the, the you know, it's like an honor to be able to meet somebody with that amount of knowledge about mm. all these different things and about all the, the different things that they've collected. And I love taking in that information and just learning. Yeah. And he likes talking stuff. about it, too. He, yeah. He's passionate. very passionate very about it. Passionate. Exactly. Yeah. And he's just like, hey, what about this robot? And he'll tell you everything about it. Yeah. And he, his face just lights up. And I love it. And I loved learning <laughs> about it. I was just taking every little thing he said uh in and just being like wow like just to learn about all these different things is a it's an honor it's an yeah. honor this is somebody who's devoted a huge chunk of their life to something that that you think is amazing yeah. so to be able to sit there and, and talk to somebody like that is i think it's awesome. like a 30-year collection he said yeah super 
super impressive. Yeah. I love that. That's little so robot cute. bubble bath. I love those. You see them once in a while. Yeah, those couple of them are still around. And they display great. That was a the second version of 2XL. Mm, I think I had that one. And then, of course, Casey, which... Uh, Got your brother in some hot water. Yeah. And you. I'll have to tell the story <laughs> of Casey one day. Yes. But my brother took a hammer to Casey's face, <laughs> and it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't think it would escalate quite that well, who far. Knew? Who knew, you know? Who my, knew? My brother's kind of a loose cannon, <laughs> even even at six. <laughs> That's the 2XL my, my parents had, and there was a Monster 8-track, and that was one of the first monster things that I ever remember listening to, and I would listen to that over and over, and, like, you know, I, I wish I could hear that now. I wish somebody had, like, transferred the old 8-tracks so that I could hear them because uh, that monster one was a big part of my childhood. Yeah, it would be cool to check out. I didn't know that that existed. Yeah. this My parents used to play this all the time, that 2XL game. That's cute. Yeah, it was a cool toy. Amigo made that. Really, really cool toy. Yeah. And then really. he had different versions, too. Like, some of them, like, I think that one has Spanish This on one's it. in Spanish, yeah. Yeah. And that was like, who has this? Who's got the Spanish <laughs> to XL, you know? <laughs> really cool stuff. Yeah, these boxes are great. You need to think of a yes or no type question. You want him to divine the answer to. Kind of like a talking magic eight ball. Google, Yes or no? Okay. Ask him. Is this the coolest museum ever? Pass your hand over his head slowly two times. Over the top. Do it again so you hear that rushing sound a second time. Sometimes he gets lost in translation. He doesn't know where he is. If you don't like that answer, he's got 39 other smart alecky answers that get chosen at random whenever you pass your hand over his head two times. Wow, That's how so cool, cool is that? I cannot recommend this museum enough. It's, this was by far the coolest museum I've ever been to. Joe was incredibly nice. Amazing, amazing place. You've got to make your way out to Adamstown. Visit the robots. Visit Joe. Buy some cool stuff from the gift shop. It is just an absolutely incredible, heartwarming, amazing place to visit. And I loved it. And I can't wait to go back. I know. It's, it was just so much fun to be in here. You really just felt like you were a kid again. And there's just so, it's so bright and like this warm atmosphere. It's, I can't perfect. recommend it enough. It's a perfect place. And it's a cool town too. So you can spend the whole day there. But this is an absolute must visit when you do. Is there any robot that you've been chasing that you have yet to find? Well, when I started collecting uh, 35, 40 years ago, uh, I couldn't afford the prices of the original lithographed tin robots that came out of Japan back in the 50s and 60s. They were and still are going for hundreds, if not thousands, and in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars a piece. I couldn't afford them then. I can't afford them now. I was hoping that eventually, if, if this place ever got out of the red and into the black, I could reinvest the money in buying the older, better lithograph tin pieces. I've done that in a couple cases, but not as much as I would have liked to. So yes, there's, a, there's hundreds of lithograph <laughs> tin robots that I would love to add to my collection if my pockets were deep enough. But they're not. <laughs> well, hopefully we can uh, drag some people here <laughs> and, you know, so that you can get a couple more of those robots to add to the collection because it is absolutely mind blowing. The gift shop is incredible and the museum is just one of a kind. I've never seen anything quite like this. So many robots on display. You could spend hours in here just looking at the stuff. And the way you set it up with the commercials and the. You know, the, the lighted cases is just fantastic. So definitely, it's, it's, it's incredible. Well, thank, thank goodness, goodness for uh, Ikea, because that's where all <laughs> of these cases came from. And the, the commercials, uh, I wanted this place to be a little interactive. Uh, I can remember going to the old Museum of Natural History back in Manhattan, and the only thing you could do there on those school trips was stand there with your hands in your pockets and look at the, the dusty cavemen and, and mammoth behind the, the glass. <laughs> So at least here there are robots to play with, uh, old robot television commercials to, to look at, 
there's even a fortune telling alien here. So <laughs> he was wrong, though. Well, he was wrong. Yeah, he's not from this planet, so you have to understand. Sometimes the answers get lost in transition. <laughs> Also lost in space, but that's another story. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Everybody, make your way out to Adamstown. Check out the Robot Museum. It's phenomenal. As well as the other shops in the uh, yes. village. There's a, there's a Lego shop. Now, he's on vacation for a couple weeks, so he won't be back till July. But uh, that is an awesome place to visit. All right, that's going to be the next one. For now, definitely check out the Robot Museum and say hello to Joe. And uh, bring him some robots to add to the collection. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joe.